A year ago I had a pretty nasty situation to sort out with a substantial amount of mould having formed on the wall behind this bench that I built in our sort of boot room, utility room that you come into from outside the house. It's that time of year now when mould rears its ugly head again. So I thought it'd be really interesting to revisit this wall and find out one year on whether that mould has returned and therefore just how effective the Zinza bin and permawhite that I treated the wall with actually was. Now, I had a fair few people after the video saying that the damp was coming from the tumble dryer or the washing machine in this cupboard. But it really wasn't. The tumble dryer is vented outside. I really need to put on this new backdraft shutter. And as you'll understand if you've watched my guide to fixing damp and condensation problems, a link to which is coming up on screen now, there were three main reasons for this mould buildup. Firstly, it's an outside wall. Secondly, because of this bench, which I built several years ago, there's no way any air can circulate across this wall. And as you'll know from watching my vid, circulation of air is critical if you're going to stop moisture-laden air finding its dew point on cold surfaces like this and then turning into condensation, the perfect breeding ground for mould. This is one of the reasons that positive input ventilation systems or PIVs are such a fantastic retrofit solution for any of you out there who have got damp, mould or condensation problems in your homes and I'll come on to that later on in this video. And the final point to make to add to this perfect breeding ground for mould, in this room wet clothes and wet shoes are continuously dumped as people come into the house from outside. And why this update video is going to be so interesting today is that nothing has changed since I treated the mould a year ago. The bench is still in its same position, maybe an inch or two further out, but not enough to substantially increase any air circulation. And on this point, you'll see here, in our rather busy, chaotic, non-minimalist family life, this bench typically has loads of stuff on it that shouldn't be there. And of course, you've got these coats hanging above, which doesn't help. So a quick peer down the back of the bench shows some clothes that shouldn't be there, lots of cobwebs, and a wall which looks in remarkably good condition. Let's remove the bench and take a closer look. Well, from a quick initial inspection, I'd say the wall looks great. The skirting boards, which have been in a terrible state and which were also treated with bin and perma white, need a quick wipe with a sugar soap wipe and look as good as new again. There's a small patch of something here in the bottom right corner where it looks like I didn't get quite enough coats of paint on. But again, with a quick wipe, most of that has gone. And I thought I'd just remove this access panel I built into the back of the cupboard to enable maintenance and access of the pipes supplying the tumble dryer and washing machine to show you that there's no significant damp or mold coming from there either. There is a little bit of mold as you'd expect in a completely unventilated space that houses a washing machine but nothing that's going to spread to this area we're talking about today. However there is something that catches the eye only if you look very closely in certain light and at a certain angle and that is this pattern that's forming on the surface of the paint and being the same colour of the paint, it's very difficult to spot. Now this is really interesting because it raises a question that rumbles on every time you post a mould treatment and remediation video like that one I did a year ago. I had three or four people in the comment section below the video, sometimes angrily saying, you just can't treat mould like this. Whatever you do, you're only encapsulating it within the paint and that creates massive issues for your wall and for health, blah, blah, blah. And Andre's comment 11 months ago is an example of this, where he's saying that you have to remove the drywall or whatever the mould has formed on rather than trying to treat it. Now I spoke to Zinza's technical team a couple of days ago and I raised this point with them. And they continued to stick by their line, which of course they would with all these mould treatment products. Their point being the mould killer and remover spray contains a fungicide that removes the mould. The Zinza bin, being shellac based, then seals any stains behind it and the permawhite contains a biocide that protects the dried coating against fungal degradation. The person I spoke to went on to say that provided the moisture isn't coming from within the wall, this treatment should be comprehensive. And the few complaints that they've had, which they've then gone on to analyse, show mould spores growing behind the paint, which suggests that they haven't even bothered to try and treat it, they just slapped a coat of paint on top. So all of this begs the question, what are these spore-shaped 
patterns on the surface of the paint. And so in my typically unscientific way, I decided to carry out a simple test. If the spores come off with a few swipes of my sugar soap wipes, then that is evidence that the mold has been comprehensively killed and is simply trying to reform on the surface because of this terrible lack of ventilation behind the bench that we've already discussed. And so without further ado, let's see how I got on. One thing I would say about this Perma White is it's incredibly hard wearing. I mean, you can wipe this without any worry about taking any paint off, which is not the case with your typical emulsion. But then you wouldn't be using a standard emulsion on these walls anyway. Right, I'm now gonna wait for that to dry. And I'm glad to say those strange transparent spores have completely disappeared. Now I'm speculating here, but I wonder whether those transparent patterns or spores on the surface of the paint was rather than old mold within the paint, actually new mold trying to form on that surface, but being prevented from doing so by the biocide in that perma white paint. Maybe one of you has a better or more scientific explanation, which you could let us know in the comments section below. Either way, I think it shoots a big hole in the naysayers like Andre's arguments that you simply can't treat existing mould, you have to remove the whole wall structure that it's sitting on because there's no sign of that mould that I treated a year ago muscling through the surface of the paint. A few of you after my last video complained that it was a bit of an open ad for Zinza, which of course it wasn't because they didn't pay me anything to mention them in it. So to keep things in this video as balanced as possible, I thought I'd look at the other options you've got. And at times like this, I generally badger the pro painter Paul on our Discord members forum, a link to which I'll post in the description below this video. Paul points out that Ronsil do a six year anti-mold paint, which also comes with a killer, a bit like the Zinza. And he recommended in particular the Tikaril Illusia, which has antimicrobial inhibitors designed to provide incredible hard wearing film for repeated cleaning. Certified for use in hospitals, he says it's bomb proof. Crown also do a mold inhibitor paint in the clean extreme range, which he also says is fantastic. As ever, do please let me know in the comments section below what paints you've got on well with for treatments like this, as this will be a great reference tool for anyone trying to research this problem in the future. And finally, speaking of comments and going back to positive input ventilation systems or PIVs, if there was one comment that emerged time and time again in the comment section below my damp mold and condensation video, it was just how revolutionary these PIVs have been for those of you out there who have been previously struggling with damp mold and condensation problems. Installing one of these in your loft or the flat master version for those apartment dwellers out there has eradicated or substantially improved damp problems very quickly. These systems now come with heater options which can temper the cold air being pumped into the house as the cold air issue is something that some people complain about. And they also have wireless controls so that the settings can be easily changed at the touch of a button. So these things are seriously worth considering if you've got a lot of problems. But don't forget, if you do install one of these, make sure you've got a 10 millimeter gap under all of your doors to ensure that the air can continue to circulate even when members of your family have shut their door. So that's it for another week. Don't forget details of everything I've talked about today will as usual be in the description below this video, which of course you can access on your smartphone by clicking on the little arrow and on your PC by clicking on the show more button. And finally, if this is your first visit to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.